In this video, we will talk about the atrial septal defect and we will first see what is a congenital heart disease. The term congenital means the condition that is present right from the birth and a congenital heart disease or a defect is a problem with the structure of the heart which is present right from the birth. Congenital heart defects are the most common type of the birth defects and these affect about 8 to 12 of every thousand neonates. The first classification of congenital heart disease is based on the presence or absence of cyanosis that is the bluish discoloration of the skin mucous membranes and nail beds due to lack of oxygen in the blood and these include acyanotic defects means there is no cyanosis and the cyanotic defects where the cyanosis is present. The second classification is based on the hemodynamic characteristics that is blood flow patterns within the heart and these include increased pulmonary blood flow, decreased pulmonary blood flow, obstruction to blood flow out of heart and mixed blood flow that is the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mix in the heart or great arteries. To sum up these two classification systems, the congenital heart diseases are divided into cyanotic and acyanotic. The acyanotic is divided into increased pulmonary blood flow including atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, patent ductus arteriosus and atrioventricular canal. The second in the acyanotic include the obstruction to blood flow from ventricles and these include the aortic stenosis, coarctation of aorta and pulmonic stenosis. The second is the cyanotic including decreased pulmonary blood flow in which there are tetralogy of fallow and tricuspid atresia. The second is the cyanotic type is the mixed blood flow including transposition of great arteries, truncus arteriosus, hypoplastic left heart syndrome and total anomalous pulmonary venous return. To better understand the atrial septal effect, we will first see how the atrial septum develops during the fetal life. We know that the heart has four chambers, the upper two are called the atria and the lower two are called the ventricles. The lower two chambers, the ventricles are divided from each other by the ventricular septum and the upper two chambers, the atria are divided from each other by the atrial septum. Initially the left and the right atria are not separate during the fetal life. Then a tissue called the septum primum grows downwards slowly creating two separate chambers and fuses with the endocardial cushions closing the space called the ostium primum. Meanwhile a hole appears at the upper area called the ostium secundum or the second opening. Now the septum secundum grows downwards just right to the septum primum and covers the ostium secundum leaving a small opening called foramen ovale. This foramen ovale allows the blood to go from right atrium to the left atrium in the fetal heart but it closes soon after the birth. If the foramen ovale fails to close after the birth it gives rise to the atrial septal defect. The atrial septal defect can be defined as an abnormal opening between the two atria that is the upper two chambers of the heart and it allows the blood to flow from the higher pressure right left atrium to the lower pressure right atrium. The types of the atrial septal defect include the ostium primum or ASD1. It includes opening at lower end of the atrial septum due to improper development of the septum primum and it also may be associated with mitral value defects in some cases. The second type is the ostium secundum or ASD2. This is the abnormal opening at the middle of the atrial septum due to improper development of septum secundum. The third is a sinus venosus defect which is the abnormal opening at the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium. In almost 90% of the congenital heart disease cases, the cause is unknown. The factors that increase the risk of atrial septal defect include rubella infection during pregnancy, substance abuse by mother, use of tobacco or alcohol by the mother, or trisomy 21 or also called as the Down syndrome. Due to abnormal opening in the atrial septum, the blood flows from the high pressure left atrium to the lower pressure right atrium through, the, uh, through that opening or the atrial septal defect which leads to volume overload to the right side of the heart. Due to volume overload and increased workload on the right side of the heart, the right atrial ventricular enlargement occurs. Since the lungs get oxygen from the right ventricle and the right ventricle is already overloaded with the extra blood, there occurs increased blood flow to the lungs which leads to elevated pulmonary artery pressure or pulmonary hypertension. The ASD2 and sinus venosus are usually asymptomatic. The signs and symptoms due to ASD1 are recurrent chest infections, dyspnea on exertion, edema in the extremities including feet and hands, easy fetishability, cardiac enlargement and congestive cardiac failure 
and poor weight gain. The diagnostic evaluation includes the auscultation, there is a characteristic systolic murmur and sometimes it also includes the diastolic murmur. The echocardiogram shows the location and size of the atrial septal defect. The ECG shows the right ventricular hypertrophy. The chest x-ray shows right atrial and ventricular dilation or cardiac enlargement. And we can also use cardiac catheterization and CT scan to locate the ASD. Now the medical management of the atrial septal defect. Some of the ASDs may close spontaneously requiring no intervention. The interventions when required include surgical patch closure using a pericardial patch or a dacron patch. This is used for moderate to large defects. Per string closure, it includes stitching around the atrial septal defect and pulling the thread to close the defect. It is used for small ASDs. The arrhythmias and the congestive cardiac failure that are associated with atrial septal defect has to be managed medically. The complications include pulmonary arterial hypertension, congestive cardiac failure and growth retardation. Now the nursing management. We have to monitor the rhythm, heart sounds, signs of the heart failure that is decreased cardiac output and the activity intolerance. These all are the part of the nursing assessment. Monitor lung sounds for crackles indicating fluid overload and we can also educate the parents and the child about the frequent respiratory infections and the ways to prevent these infections by getting the vaccines. Nutrition. Many patients have decreased growth because of the decreased cardiac output or the cardiac failure. For these patients, calculate the caloric intake, weight the patient and educate the parents about the ways to manage the nutrition. Lastly, we have to administer the medications as prescribed by the physician. Thank you. That was all about the atrial septal defect.